So I just wanted to make a quick video on simulating OLEDs with GPVDM. Um, it's been a while since I made a video on OLEDs and uh, I've changed the model quite a lot since last time I made a video so I thought it might be making worth making a sort of recap video and a sort of uh, refresher video effect uh, as you like. So um, this is the default OLED simulation now and it comes, uh, you get to this by clicking new simulation and click on OLED. <coughs> Um, so if we sort of zoom in on here and have a look, we can see that the device has got um, what well, looks like one, two, three active layers. There's actually four, uh, but uh, one of them is quite thin, and it's got some contacts and things like that. that this is the emitter layer, this ALQ3. Um, if we look at the layer editor, we can see the device has got um, four layers that are actually used in a drift fusion simulation. You can see this by, you see it says active layer here. Um, so I think the, the best thing to do to understand this is just click Run Simulation and um, let it, let it uh, chug away. Now notice these, I think it's going to be too quick um, for me to talk about this whilst I'm doing it, but notice these coloured dots here that are uh, zipping along the screen. Um, so we'll go back and look at those in a second. Well th there's the finished uh, OLED simulation. Um, let's just go and look at the actual simulation process and what it was doing uh, before we go into that. So when it was generating, when it's putting these stars on the screen here, this meant that it was effectively simulating various wavelengths. So each one of these stars represents a simulation step. So it goes from purple through to bl uh, blue to yellow to red. Um, and you know, each one of these will represent a different wavelength of light it's simulating. And it will produce one of these outputs um, showing effectively ray tracing um, light escaping the device. And then once it's finished this, it does the, the current voltage curve simulation and uh, up to about, I think, about four volts, and then that's and th then the simulation is done. Um, so let's just look at the the results. So it produces a JV curve, which looks vaguely sensible. It produces a L and uh, no a LV curve, which is light against voltage curve, which again looks vaguely sensible. Um, so that's a light emitted from the device, and also. Electrically, we can look at what's happening in the device as it's doing that JV curve by plotting things, for example, like the con conduction band um, against the EV, the valence band, and you can sort of see how these the device um, potentials change as a function of um, you know, applied voltage. You know, and you can sort of plot things like electron density, so Q N three and Q P three, um, etc. And you can plot these, you know, as a function of apply voltage. <clears throat> so that's really the sort of electrical side of it. So let's go back and look at the actual um, optical side. So this is the, the ray trace simulation that is actually done um, for you. And um, you can sort of see all these are emitted from one single point source in the centre of uh, the, the, the device. And for anybody who's uh, used this code before, um, it, this is actually a lot faster than before because I've, I've rewritten the, 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 the back end and the front end so it sort of it should perform a lot better for you. Um, yeah, and if we go to the optical window, we can effectively, so this is 300 nanometers, so we can look at different wavelengths, so say, I think, five, what's 530, is that green? I think that's green, or yellow, uh, it's just loading, there we go, yellowy green. Or we can look at, say, 660, which is red, um, and you can see sort of the light escapes the, devi the, the device in a different way for whatever wavelength you have, because... Um, the, the refractive indices, I think I've got the refractive indices of the MPD and the ALQ3 varying um, and, the, and the ITO as a, as a function of um, wavelength. So um, the actual spectrum that's, that's, that's emitted from this is given in the emission parameters. So if we go to the emission parameters and find the emitter layer, so this one, the ALQ3 layer, this is the one that's actually emitting the light. Um, we're using the ALQ3 spectrum to sort of generate the light that's being uh, passed out of the device. So if we click edit, we can select what type of spectrum we want to use. And let's, let's go and look at these spectr this spectrum, this ALQ3 spectrum in a bit more detail. So we're going to go to the database and the materials database and we're going to go, no we're not, we're going to, sorry, we're going to go to the emission database and we're going to look at ALQ3. So this is the ALQ3 spectrum it uses to do this sort of optical simulation. And what we can do, and it takes effectively, it breaks the spectrum up into sections and effectively um, propagates um, light from a few wavelengths across the spectrum out of the device. And what we can do because of this is we can then look how the light that comes out of the OED will look like 
and it's, it's very important if you're designing OLEDs because, for example, you know you want to know, for example, if you look at it straight on like that, how much light you'll get, or if you look at it from the side, how much light you'll get. And this is a very important feature for designing screens and things like that. So if you go to the output window, um, there's these files here that look like little color maps, and you can actually plot um, the X, Y, Z color space. So we've got so there's Y. Um, so we'll look at X and Z. Now, if you're not into OLEDs, um, don't, don't worry too much about these. It's effectively a conversion of how the wavelengths coming out of the device affect or, or, or how, how your eye perceives them. Um, and for, for those of us that aren't very much into OLEDs, I've written this uh, file called Theta RGB out. And what that does is it, it converts those uh, color XYZ values into actual RGB values. And this is the color that you actually get out of this um, OLED as a function of angle. So this is zero degrees, 180 degrees. So let's just pop that up there and let's go back to the device structure. So if you were looking at it like that, oops, oops, so, so straight on, at, that's at sort of 90 degrees. So you get this, this blue color here. And as you moved off to the edge, so you get up to about 50 degrees, you get a sort of slightly different blue. Um, and obviously the more, more points you use across it, the more accurate the color will be. Um, and then as you get go over to sort of Less than um, less than 50 degrees, you're going to get dark, so nothing. So you can sort of guess or make an approximation of what light you're going to get out of the device. Um, what else is there? Oh yes. So the final thing I just thought it'd be worth uh, mentioning, whilst uh, whilst here is looking at this output. So this model here is what the graphical user interface effectively thinks the device looks like. But if you want to know, it can be useful to understand what the back end thinks the, the device looks like. So we can look at that or, um, in the output. And if you go to um, all triangles dot that, it will show you um, what the back end thinks the device looks like. Because it thinks it's a series of, of layers. They're the layers all made up with triangles. And you notice there's this, this big box um, around the outside of it with a sort of a margin here and a margin here, a margin here and here. Um, add the bigger margin here. And what this is is effectively the world box. And this effectively shows, describes the world that your device sits in. Um, and you can see if you go back to the actual device structure here, the, the simulation sort of cuts off at that box um, and the light doesn't get propagated any further and also up the top there. Um, and you can set this by going to the substrate XYZ size and you can see um, Got various margins, so the y zero margin is four, so that's like four times the height of the device, and you know, and so you can play with that um, and, and configure how much or how far the light can propagate away from the device. So I think that's it, really. That's just a quick recap of OLED simulation. Um, I hope you found that useful, and um, yeah, if you've got questions or anything like that, do shoot me an email. Thank you very much.